Motivation is the combination of two neurochemicals, what we call neuromodulators. And those two are epinephrine, goes by another name called adrenaline. We need energy, we need to move. And we often think that energy comes from food and it doesn't. Energy comes from neurotransmission and from particular neuromodulators. We need to eat, of course, to sustain ourselves, but goal-directed behavior requires a fuel and that fuel is epinephrine. And there are ways to increase epinephrine, we'll talk about it in a moment. The other is dopamine. You know, the neuromodulator dopamine does many things. It's involved in reward and feel good, but its main job is craving and motivation. I have a colleague at Stanford, um, Anna Lemke, who's a psychiatrist. Uh, she actually has an amazing book coming out in August called Dopamine Nation. She talks about dopamine as the molecule of craving. There's also another book called The Molecule of More, which is um, very good about this. Dopamine isn't about reward, it's about craving and motivation. And dopamine at the same time is something that we, that we get more of when we reach milestones. So epinephrine and dopamine are close cousins in motivation. There is a way to increase epinephrine, just pure physiology. And a lot of people are already doing this, and my lab has looked at this a bit, but there are ways to breathe that will increase epinephrine. And there's another way to do it, which essentially costs nothing as well, which is you can throw yourself into cold water or get into a cold shower. Now, I'm not, there are a lot of reasons to do cold exposure uh, as long as it's done safely. But one of the things that isn't often understood is that when you get into a cold shower and you decide to deliberately stay there for one to three minutes or maybe even longer, you are releasing adrenaline from your adrenals and you're releasing the same molecule from your brain, which is epinephrine. It's called epinephrine in the brain. It's adrenaline from the adrenals in the body. Getting into a nice bath will do the same thing. That will increase your energy level. It is a mild form of stress, but it is energy level. Exercise will do it too, but a real quick way to do it is to get into a cold shower or an ice bath. Not everyone wants to do that. So with respiration, you can do this. My lab has studied this protocol. It involves taking 25 deep inhales and exhales. So in through the nose, out through the mouth, 25 of those, and you will be alert you will actually feel a little agitated. However, if you finish 25 or 30 of those breaths and you exhale all your air and hold your breath for about 15 to 30 seconds and then repeat, what you'll find is that during the exhale hold period, you can achieve a state of calm with very high levels of alertness. This simple trick. I don't like calling it a hack because this is actually what the biology was designed to do. A hack kind of implies you're, you're cheating the system. And I don't like the word hack because it always sounds like something's getting carved up. And, you know, so I, I hate the phrase biohacking. What we're talking about here is, is actionable biology or applied biology. So you're increasing epinephrine. Now, what you do with that energy is up to you. But many people actually find that just by doing this pattern of breathing, they suddenly feel like they could or want to exercise or they could or want to work. They could or want to get up out of their chair. So that's one thing that can be beneficial. The cold shower thing, you know, and Wim Hof is famous for, you know, the Iceman and for doing this breathing that's very similar to the type of breathing I described. You know, it's, it's a way of generating adrenaline in the body at low levels, but that allow people to get into action. Now, the dopamine component involves reaching some sort of milestone or craving something. Dopamine is best served not just by reaching a goal, but by craving a goal. Dr. Lemke has talked about this as, let's say you eat a piece of chocolate. We think that the dopamine release that you get from that is actually about the satisfaction from the chocolate. But the next time you eat something delicious, pay careful attention the good feeling that you're feeling is actually the craving for more. And this is fascinating and it's at the heart of addiction, right? The, the, the cocaine user or even the pot user, and I realize nowadays a lot more people, you know, use pot legal and stuff, so it's complicated. But that craving or for, or for sex or for whatever it is, that excite, excitement is craving, it's not reward. And that's because dopamine and pleasure and pain have a very unique combo.
The way to get dopamine is once you are in action, set a milestone. Okay, today I'm just gonna go out for a walk or today I'm just gonna send 10 emails related to some business related goal or whatever it happens to be. That can help dramatically, but without epinephrine, without the bias toward action, it is very hard to get out of complacent inactive states. And remember, stress and excitement at a neurochemical level are just epinephrine released in the brain. But dopamine is the reset. It's kind of the re-up of epinephrine that allows you to repeat that over and over and over. And from a purely biochemical perspective, most people don't realize this, but epinephrine, adrenaline is made from dopamine. The biochemistry of dopamine and the biochemistry of epinephrine are such that they are, they are linked. You cannot have epinephrine without dopamine synthesis. So if someone has a real clinical depression and they're low in dopamine, well then talk to a psychiatrist. There are drugs out there that they work by increasing dopamine and epinephrine. Very distinct from other antidepressants that uh, like Prozac, which increased serotonin. Serotonin is the molecule that basically makes us feel pretty good with what we got in the present. It does not tend to drive motivation. It tends to come from eating, from having had you know, a satiating experience or meal. It's not involved in craving as much. And of course, I'm talking about these chemicals in very coarse terms. They, they have subtlety to them as well. This lies at the, at the uh, kind of deepest levels of our uh, evolutionary biology of sex, and re which of course underlies reproduction, which underlies the progression of our species. Uh, of course, there are other reasons people have sex, but the, but the dopamine is produced in pursuit of and during sex but just to be concrete about it after orgasm dopamine levels plummet and another and a hormone called prolactin is is increased prolactin sets a quiescence it's actually also what's released in um, new and expecting parents that calms them down and makes them very focused on the needs of another right you can't be running around like crazy certainly not looking for new mates shortly after um, a child is delivered into a, a relationship or even a single parent. And when prolactin goes up, it tends to make us more quiescent, not want to seek novelty. It makes us content with what we have and put us into caregiving roles in both men and women. And in animals and in humans, it tends to throw down body weight to preserve, in theory, to make us able to uh, tolerate long nights of no sleep, to raise young. So it's dopamine is involved in the pursuit of food, the pursuit of sex, the pursuit of money, the pursuit. But the moment that we reach those goals, there's a huge plummet in dopamine. And then it resets our, you know, over time it resets for the pursuit of more. And I think the book, The Molecule of More, describes this really, really nicely. I think it's Daniel Lieberman. It's, he's a psychiatrist at GW at George Washington. That's a great book about this too. But I think that we can take advantage of the biology of epinephrine and realize that when we have increased levels of epinephrine, we need to move. And sometimes that can be keys on a keyboard and focus. Sometimes that can be actual physical movement around, exercise, etc. One of the most challenging things is to have high levels of epinephrine in our system and to be sitting still. That's called stress. And 2020 was a forced situation of, of limited movement from our usual routines and a lot of incoming information that was very triggering to a lot of people. And I realize we're still somewhat in this, but whether or not it's for work purposes or fear of COVID, et cetera, it's clear that bodily movement is a very, very good thing. And that the more we physically move, the more that these circuits in the brain and body that underlie motivation get carried out because the reason we have a nervous system is to move. The only way we can affect anything besides ourselves, other people, other events, etc. There are only two ways. One is movement and the other is sweating. Movement is how we speak. Movement is how we eat. Movement is how we reproduce. Movement, movement is everything. And so epinephrine is like an engine beneath movement. Dopamine is like a rudder that steers us toward particular things as we move.